welcome you all to our Lenten Wednesday worship here at Hope Lutheran Church in Eau Claire. Uh, our theme for worship during Lent this year is forgiveness, and tonight we'll be looking at forgiveness and restoration, how that restores our relationships with one another. We'll be using the Holden Evening Prayer as our, the basis of our worship tonight, and we'll begin now as Jim lights our Lenten candle. You are the light of the world, the light the darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and shine within your people. For the world of 
May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Amen. Boys and girls, tonight I wanted to talk about friendship and forgiveness and friendship. And I've got a story uh, about two little boys in Mrs. Brown's, Mrs. Brown's third grade class, and their names are David and Troy. And they are best friends, and they do everything together until one day at recess. The boys in third grade at recess had decided that they were going to play a game of pickup basketball. And so they picked two captains, and one of them was Troy, and the other was a boy named Pete. And then they flipped a coin to see who would, which boy would pick first, and, and the coin fell in Troy's favor. And David thought, this is great. Troy's my best friend, and he'll pick me first, and I love it when we get to play on the same team. But then Troy didn't pick David. He picked the new kid, Juan. And then to make matters worse, Pete ended up choosing David. So now David was really bummed because he realized that, that he and, and Troy wouldn't be able to play on the same team. So he kind of moped through the whole game, and, and when recess finally ended, he was really glad that they could go inside and the game was over. Well, that day when the last school bell rang, Troy asked David if he'd like to come over to his house after school for a little bit. And David said, no thanks, Troy, maybe another day. And then David didn't even say goodbye when he left, and Troy was really confused and hurt, and he wondered, what has gotten into David? Why is he acting so cold to me? What's, what's wrong? Well, then it's the next day, and David came to school, and he was ready to let bygones be bygones. But he walked into Mrs. Brown's third grade classroom, and there was Troy talking with Juan again. And it just, like, sparked it all up for him again. So he went and he, he uh, spoke with Jenny and her friends before his class started. And, well, then the bell rang for class to begin, and... David walked by Troy's desk, and when he did that, he just kind of reached over and <laughs> he pushed all of Troy's books onto the floor. And Troy said, hey, that was mean, David. And he was so mad, he gave David a shove. Well, now Mrs. Brown spoke up. She said, boys, that is quite enough. What's gotten into the two of you? I thought you two were friends. She continued. She said, boys, after you're done eating lunch, I want you to come back to this classroom instead of going out on the, the playground for recess. I want you to help me with some chores. Well, after noon, after lunch, uh, both boys came back to the classroom after they had finished their lunch. And Mrs. Brown had a, a little can of oil. And she pointed to the cupboards underneath the, the windows on the the one side of the classroom. And she said, boys, some of those hinges on the cupboards are getting really squeaky. So I want one of you to put a single drop of oil on each hinge, and then the other boy can work the oil in by swinging the door back and forth. And then when you get to the next cupboard, you guys can switch so that you each do both things. So the two boys started walking towards the first cupboard, and Mrs. Brown added, and while, you add it, while you're at it, you might want to think about your friendship. Well, they get to the first cupboard, and David applies the drop of oil on those hinges, and then Troy uh, works it in by swinging the door back and forth. When that one's done, they go to the second cupboard, and David gives Troy the bottle of oil. And David put, or Troy puts it down on the ground and he says, David, there's something I have to tell you. I feel bad that I didn't pick you for the basketball team yesterday. Um, Juan and his family just moved in on my street, a couple of houses down from us. And my mom, she asked me if I could be kind to him and include him in on some things. She said it's hard being the new, the new kid in school and I could help Juan 
make new friends. But now, he said, I realize that I should have chosen you first because I always want you on my team. You're my best friend, David. I'm sorry. Well, now David felt just <laughs> awful. Troy was just trying to be nice to this new boy. Troy, he said, I feel like a total heel. I'm sorry I was mean to you. Well, the two boys forgave each other, and as they continued oiling the, the different cupboards, Mrs. Brown could hear them giggling together. And so she knew that whatever the snag had been, they had cleared it up. Well, when they finished oiling the cupboards, they returned the oil can to Mrs. Brown. Well, she said, you two seem to be getting along better now. And David said, yeah, we realized we were both a little wrong. We forgave each other. Mrs. Brown said, well, I think you've helped me enough to, today, boys. You can go back onto the playground for the rest of recess. And then she waved the little can of oil at them, and she said, you know, boys, forgiveness is the oil that lubricates friendships. And David and Troy looked at each other, and they weren't really sure what Mrs. Brown was getting at, but somehow it sounded just about right. Well, boys and girls, if we didn't have forgiveness in friendships, we would just not get along together. And so when we get into disagreements with one another or when things go wrong, it's good for us to sit down and work it out and, and um, to have a heart that we can forgive one another. And then what that does is, boys and girls, it restores our friendship so that we can continue on. We don't lose a friend, we keep a friend. And sometimes when we forgive, that friendship can even get stronger. So let's have a word of prayer. Dear God, thank you for forgiving us, and we pray that we might follow suit, follow your example, and forgive one another. And when we do that, then you restore our friendships, Lord. So we thank you for this, and give us a heart to forgive one another. Amen. Okay, our reading for today is a very familiar story. It's the story of the prodigal son. I'm not really sure why we call it that because there are three main characters in the story. It's about more than just the one boy that goes away. Then Jesus said, there was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all that he had and traveled to a distant country, and there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to be one of the citizens of, he hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? But here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. And get the fatted calf and kill it. And let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field. And when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked him what, is, what was going on. He replied, 
Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf because he got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, Listen, all these years I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command, yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. Friends, may grace and peace be yours in abundance in the knowledge of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. You can't get there from here. It always sounds a little crazy when you hear that. It means that you're in, where you are, there is some kind of obstacle or impasse that stands between you and the place where you want to go. A river or a mountain or road construction is blocking the way. In order to get there, you're going to have to circle around this obstacle, or perhaps the only other alternative is to forge a path directly over or through the impasse. Impasses occur in travel, but they're also true when we navigate relationships. A steep ridge can stand in the way of a road's course, Resentment can mount up between two friends. A deep canyon can separate two locations. Mistrust from an offense can create a gulf between two friends. An unyielding granite mountain can lead to a dead end. A heart rendered hard from experiencing hurt can end a relationship. In due time, every relationship will encounter impasses of, at one point or another. Is there a way to get beyond the obstacle? How can the roadway from me to you open up again? Jesus tells a parable about a certain family. A man has two sons. The one son, the younger of the two, makes a grave error in what he values. He cares more about money and high living than he does about his family. This young, foolish son makes an outrageous request to his father. Give me my share of the inheritance. I don't want to wait until you die. I want it now so that I can do what I, want, I, what I please with it. And unbelievably, the father consents. He gives his impetuous son his share of the family estate. The young son hits the road and leaves his family behind. Jesus says that he goes off to a distant country. In other words, it's a place you can't get here, get to from here. A chasm is formed between this young man and his family. And you know how the story unfolds. The young man squanders all his assets on fast living until he's left with nothing. He goes from high, living high on the hog to feeding the pigs. Eventually, he comes to his senses. He wants to return home, but he realizes that the damage he has caused to his family has completely ruptured the way things were. He can't get back to the place he was before. There's no possible way he can make it right and undo everything that he has done. But nevertheless, his longing for home is so strong, he decides he'll take whatever bond his father will offer him. He heads for the place that once was known as home. But when he arrives, his father is simply overjoyed to have his long-lost son return to him. He showers him in kisses. He 
He trades his sun tattered clothing for a fine garment. He covers his calloused bare feet with shoes and he throws a feast for friends and family. The wayward son didn't see any way possible to restore what he had broken. But there was a way. It was forgiveness. In his love, his father forgave his son. Forgiveness has the power to restore our broken relationships. It removes the obstacles choking the bonds between us. It opens up the impasse and creates a new way forward. The world yearns for forgiveness. There's a Spanish story about a father and a son who had become estranged. The son had left home, and in time, the absence of his son weighed on the father. All the details of their long ago disagreement ceased to matter. He only wanted to have his son back. The father looked high and low. He asked friends if they'd heard from his son, nothing. In one last desperate attempt, the father placed an ad in a, new, a Madrid newspaper. The ad said this, Dear Paco, meet me in the plaza in front of the newspaper office at noon on Saturday. All is forgiven. I love you, your father. Saturday came, and at noon, 800 Pacos showed up at the plaza. They were all looking for the forgiveness of their father. Forgiveness creates a new pathway. The world is yearning for forgiveness. Divine forgiveness restores our relationship with God. Our own sin destroyed the bonds between humanity and our divine creator. It was a rupture we could not possibly restore. Mired in sin, we can't get there from here. But what we could not achieve, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ did. On his cross, Jesus restored what had been broken. His actions spanned the divide we had created. He reached out in love. It was forgiveness, plain and simple. And his actions have restored us in the house of divine love. The story of the prodigal son doesn't end with the father receiving his son. There's another broken relationship out there, the one between the two brothers, when the younger brother had left, he deeply hurt his older brother, and the older brother isn't as ready to forgive as his father was, not by a long shot. The father reaches out to his oldest son. He hears out his son's grievances, and in his loving, fatherly way, he encourages his son to look for a way forward. The story ends there. It leaves the outcome of the brothers to us. In a way, you might say, we get to write the ending of this story. We write it through our own forgiving actions. Friends, we have received the greatest forgiveness possible, divine forgiveness through Christ our Lord. Pass it on, my friends. Pass it on. Amen. We sing our hymn, which is softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling.
Let us pray. Great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Sing one final hymn. Blessed be the tie that binds. <clears throat> Peace.